Flood season in Chiang Mai was a lot of fun for us kids. It was like having a giant swimming pool everywhere we went. Here we are with our mom and a couple of kids who lived with us because their parents were in distant places on the mission field. For our annual hot season vacation, we frequently stayed in one of the cabins on Kuntan Mountain. One year, Dad decided to uh, gear down his bicycle and use that to get up Kuntan. Unfortunately, he had to have a porter run along behind to carry the bicycle in the really steep sections of the trail. Notice all these porters carrying suitcases and uh, probably some office equipment and letters and correspondence and all manner of things uh, that the missionaries considered essential for their stay on Kuntan Mark Mountain. Here's the bicycle again and the porter. The bicycle was probably actually a lighter load than uh, he was used to carrying for the missionaries. Here's Ed doing a taffy pull. The missionaries on Kuntan often devised various activities for the kids of whom there were many in those days. Here's Mary Grather doing her taffy pole and Bruce. Here's Carol roasting some uh, dough, I think. This is, uh, I believe, just outside of cabin number five uh, in its original location. Cabin five has subsequently been moved to a point lower than the springs so that water can flow by gravity to the cabin. But in the old days, when Cabin 5 was up on Yaw Sea, the water had to be brought in buckets by porters from the spring. Here's Carol and Mary Grether playing in a tree, which I believe was outside of Cabin 3.
I'm gonna race you, race you, race you, race you back home The sun's going down now And I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go Cause there's dirt on my skirt and pebbles stuck in our toes Oh, which way should we go down? Nobody knows, nobody knows I'm gonna race you back home In 1959, the McDaniel family made preparations to return to the United States for furlough number two. My dad planned a big trip. This was to take us to India, Lebanon, Greece, Italy, Switzerland, Denmark, Sweden, England, and finally the USA. Some of these stops were so that my dad could visit hospitals or medical programs or doctors that he knew or had heard of, and some of the visits were for the educational enhancement of us kids. I myself was 11 years old at the time. Ed was about four years older than I, and Carol about four years younger. Our first stop was to be New Delhi, but we were diverted to Karachi, Pakistan, because of a big dust storm in New Delhi. Our brief visit in Pakistan allowed my dad to take some movies of the uh, sights and sounds there, including uh, a snake charmer. When we finally got to India, we visited multiple sites, including clinics, but also tourist sites, one of which was the Taj Mahal. I remember it being very hot. When we actually went into the Taj Mahal, we had to either remove our shoes or have them covered by these uh, shoe covers. This was because it was considered a sacred place. The Taj Mahal is actually the tomb of the favorite wife of a powerful mogul from the 1600s. Not far from the Taj Mahal is a fort-like structure called Fatipur Sikri. It's in the center of the town and is a place famous for its red sandstone architecture. This uh, fellow was apparently trying to sell water, and we would have happily bought some, except that its safety was uncertain, so we had to endure our thirst. This man was hauling water out of a well and filling a goat skin with that water again. It looked good, but wasn't safe to drink. My dad was fascinated with transportation in all its forms, whether on land, in the air, or by sea. Here's a mother monkey transporting her offspring in a maternal sort of way. Even wooden wheels need oiling and greasing. Dad was bothered by the fact that in Hindu India, sacred cows sometimes had better places to sleep and better things to eat than the human beings. Here's 
some folks tediously putting together some roofing material. Camels are used to plow as well as to carry burdens and pull carts. Dad was fascinated by this scene where we see a camel pulling an ancient plow right beneath a tall tower. Ed was apparently having some trouble with his camera there. This is one of the health centers that Dad visited. He wanted to get some ideas as to how things were done in other countries. Manure is used as a fuel in India. This lady was making uh, manure patties by hand. These were then stacked up to dry in the sun. A camel chewing its cud. And here a camel at work pulling a Persian water wheel. Note that this camel is blindfolded. Apparently he or she has the sensation that he or she is going someplace, doesn't realize it's going round and round, and is not getting distracted. One of our reasons for going to India was to visit Woodstock School. This is in the foothills of the Himalayas in northern India, just outside the town of Missouri. The reason for visiting the school was because there was a serious possibility that Ed or I or both would be going to high school in Woodstock. As it turned out, neither Ed nor I went to Woodstock. We went to Stony Brook School in Long Island, New York. However, Nathan, my son, did go to Woodstock for the last three years of high school, and it was nice to know what he was getting into to some extent. Here's Dad riding a horse. I don't think Ed or I or Dad was particularly comfortable on horseback, especially with the drop-off at the side of the road. Here's some fellows smoking a hookah pipe in the Missouri area. While in Lebanon, we went to visit Byblos, a city north of Beirut. It is situated on the Mediterranean Sea. It has been besieged from those without and defended by those within multiple times over the centuries. Here in the fortifications you can see some cannonballs lodged in the fortification. Notice these umbrellas from Thailand that we carried with us all through this trip. They uh, were useful in keeping off the sun and also as pointers. Byblos is purported by some to be the oldest city in the world. One of the fun things for Ed and I, at least, was the opportunity to fly on various types of airplanes. Here we are embarking on a Caravelle, a jet plane, one of the early jet planes. This one had two engines in the back. You might have noticed that we uh, went into the plane through a staircase in the back of the plane. Copenhagen is famous for Tivoli Gardens, 
an amusement park that's known around the world. We made a trip by train from Denmark to Sweden. The train was rolled on to a ferry boat and on the other end it rolled off onto tracks that took us further into Sweden. Our trip to Sweden was inspired by the fact that my dad wanted to meet with Dr. Malmstrom, the inventor of the vacuum extractor, a device used to assist deliveries of babies. The last stop on our big trip was England. Here we are in Trafalgar Square. Phil and Carol are feeding the pigeons. Except that I jerked my hand away every time the pigeon came near. <laughs> landed in what was called at that time Idlewild Airport. The airport was subsequently renamed JFK Airport. When we arrived in New York City we had some time before school began for us kids. My dad was keen on having us visit some of the prominent sites around New York City. One of those was Coney Island, a place that he apparently remembered fondly. One of the attractions was this parachute contraption, something we were happy to be able to get off once we arrived close to the ground. There was quite a bounce at the bottom of the voyage. We also went to see what I believe was the Brooklyn Zoo, one of the main zoos in New York City. This panda was no doubt very hot in the summertime. And the zookeeper, I think, was quite brave about getting into the enclosure and trying to entertain the poor panda a little bit so it wasn't quite so bored. That's me sitting up there on the ledge with Mom. And the panda, of course, would have loved the snow that came much later. In the winter. We had a very heavy snow, almost record-breaking, and this of course resulted in closure of the schools and we had a lot of fun. Not only outside our apartment watching cars try to get unstuck, but also in Riverside Park, which was within walking distance of 47 Claremont Avenue, where we were housed for almost a year. This poor car had its front wheels in one set of ruts and its back wheels in another set of ruts. We went sledding in Riverside Park that was Phil and Carol. Here comes Mom. And we think this might be Dad. <laughs> 